ready to receive it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God has definitely given us an amazing opportunity with this movie that's just come out. So we need to take advantage of it. Please, if you're willing, grab a box of books. It's actually not that, it's not that many. It looks like a lot, but it's not that many. Just go, put them on a door, and hopefully you'll be leaving a blessing for somebody else. So before we begin this morning, let's have a word of prayer. Most wonderful and gracious Father, Lord, we thank you so much for how you've blessed us in our lives, for how you've taken care of us, Lord. I just ask you that we please continue to take advantage of the opportunities that you've given us to reach out to those who are in need. This opportunity that you've given us, Lord, help us not waste it. But Lord, as I preach your word this morning, I pray that it is your words and not my own. I want to thank you so much for this amazing opportunity and privilege to preach your word today. Lord, we love you so much. We praise your name, and I invite your Holy Spirit to be with us so that, Jesus, you can be sitting next to us, pointing to us in our Bible and telling us this is something that we really need to know. Thank you so much, Jesus. In your precious name I pray. Amen. The title of my sermon this morning is prayer pleases the Lord, and we're going to be looking at 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. Now, in 2014, I had the privilege of being a boys' counselor for Teen Week at Camp Wakanda. Camp Wakanda is the Wisconsin Adventist summer camp, and I've been privileged to work there for the past uh, three summers now. It's an amazing, been an amazing experience. But that summer, I only got to be a counselor for one week. I didn't get the training as all the other counselors got. I was just thrown into it because we had so many teen campers coming for camp, praise the Lord, that they needed two extra counselors. And I had been working in the dish room for the past three weeks straight. I was glad to get out. So one of the most rewarding things that I found about being a counselor is when you get to pray with your campers before they go to bed every night. Because that is the time you get to interact with them one-on-one. -on -one. Most of the day, they're playing with each other. They're either fighting with each other. This is the time where they're calm, hopefully, because it can be a hard time getting them to sleep. But this is the time where you get to interact one-on-one, -on -one, asking what's going on in your life, what's going on at home. Can I pray with you? Now, since it was my first week, I didn't really know much about praying with them every night. I hadn't gone through the training. I hadn't been encouraged to do that. So I kind of missed a couple nights here and there. Number one, I was exhausted because being a camp counselor can be very exhausting. On the second side, I just I didn't know much about it. But I thought about it after I had learned more about it from my boys director. And I kind of didn't want to end there. Praying with them every day for the next week, for the next seven days. That's great. But I didn't want to stop there. So during the week, I actually had made this walking stick. I brought it with me. I'll bring it out at the end. But it was something that I created with my own two hands. I was so happy to have it. But the Lord gave me an idea. And he told me to do this. I want you to take that walking stick, and I want you to have them write their names on it. And from that point on, I want you to pray for them every single night for the next year. So Saturday night came, the night before they're about to leave, sad times, and I had them all write their name on that staff. And I told them for the next year, I would pray for them individually every single day. These kids, after they left camp, who knows what they went through? Who knows the struggles that were going on in their lives? Sometimes they would share it with me, sometimes they wouldn't. But I know this was pleasing in God's sight. But it's not only just with campers, but it has to do with everyone. Right now, New Zealand has been rocked by 
a very tremendous earthquake, leaving damage and people homeless. Another thing that has happened recently is our current political state. The election, division has come into our country if it hasn't already been there before. But day after day, I keep hearing, it's getting worse, it's getting worse, it's getting worse. The people of America are in need of prayer. Thinking about Chattanooga with all the wildfires that have been going on. Dangering people's lives. People are going to the hospital, hospital because of smoke inhalation and getting sick. Those people are in need of prayer. But it hits even closer to home. You and I have personal struggles in our lives. You and I have friends and family who are going through many different situations. They are also in need of prayer. And God sees our suffering. God sees that we're suffering, and he's giving us a gift. And that gift is prayer. It's an opportunity for us to come to the Lord and say, Lord, this is what the world's going through, and this is what we need to pray for. So as we look this morning, I want you to remember this. Pray for everyone. It pleases the Lord. So if you turn in your Bibles with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2, it's also going to be up on the screen, 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And as you're turning there, unfortunately we can't go over all of chapter 1, but I just want to set up what's about to take place in chapter 2. So in chapter 1, Paul has been discussing about how he used to persecute Christians, talking to Timothy while he's in jail preaching and telling him all about what it means to be a pastor in that time. Now, Paul had been very much so persecuting Christians for a while, but God had grace upon him. And now, God has used him to save millions at this point. Thousands of people saved because of what God had done through his life. Trying to remember that even some of the worst of people can still be saved. He starts in verse 18, giving Timothy a charge, reminding him of what he had been called to do. Timothy, remember this calling. I know I don't have any, many days left, but remember what you were called to do by God. But he also mentions two friends of Timothy. He mentions in verse 20, Hymenaeus and Alexander. Now, this is really the only time Hymenaeus and Alexander actually are mentioned here. And in verse 19, he had mentioned that they had shipwrecked their faith in regard to truth. These men used to be very dedicated to God. They used to know the truth, but they had fallen away. Verse 20, he says, And I have handed them over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. Paul to say, I had to let Hymenaeus and Alexander go. I've done all that I can, but I want you to think of your two brothers in the faith, two former brothers in the faith. And this is where he goes into the passage that we're looking at today. And I want you to remember that. He brings out two personal friends of Timothy, before he even starts talking about this. So this is what it says, and it's on the screen, but I'm going to read it to you again. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. The first verse that I want to look at is, of course, verse 1. I urge then, first of all, petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving to be made for all people. What Paul is laying out here, first and foremost, he says, I urge then, first of all, before you do anything else, Timothy, this is what you need to do. 
all four of these words, petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving, are all forms of prayer. In the Greek, each of these words has a definition that could mean prayer. They all have to encompass prayer. So what Paul is really saying here, I urge then first of all, Timothy, I need you to pray. I need you to get on your knees. I need you to pray. This is the first thing that you need to do in your life. Pray. But what are these four different aspects of prayer? The first one, he says petitions. Petitions can also mean requests. You know, in prayer meeting, we come once a week to bring our requests, our problems. But not only ours. We bring family members, loved ones, people that we've heard of overseas who are suffering. We bring these requests before God and ask, God, please take care of these people. Take care of my brother. Take care of my sister. Take care of the person that I don't even know who they are. But they need prayer. That's one of the first things we need to do when, we, when it comes to prayer is making requests before God. The next word is prayers, and prayers used here is very general. This is a word that actually can encompass all three of these. So I've termed as general prayers for people, just praying for people in general. The second word here is intercession. When it comes to interceding for people, we want to intercede on their behalf. Asking God, please, I know my friend doesn't know Jesus. I know that they're lost. I know that they need you, Jesus, but they don't. They don't have you. And in turn, we are interceding. This is what intercession is all about. Interceding on another person's behalf. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, as it's coming next week, it says Thanksgiving. Giving praises to God. Praising God for what he's done in our lives and also other people's lives as well. Because a lot of people in this world don't think they're being blessed by God very much. But they are. In big ways and small ways. A person down the street may not even know who God is, has been wanting a new car for a long time, and somehow they get a new car. They may not realize it's God, but we in turn can pray for them and say, God, thank you so much for blessing my friend with something new, for giving them a blessing in their life. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that people shouldn't pray for themselves also. I'm not saying that the people that we're praying for, we should just pray for them and they shouldn't pray at all. Because prayer is one of the ways we have a relationship with Christ. It is our connection. Ellen White calls it the breath of the soul. This is our connection to God, our life source. We should also be praying that other people pray as well. That other people will come to know God and in turn pray to him. Making petitions, prayers, and intercession and thanksgiving for all people. In saying be made for all people, I'll go into this a little bit more later. But you notice it doesn't designate just a singular group. It doesn't just say, this is one group that I want you to pray for. I want you to pray for everyone. Everyone in the world is in need of prayer right now. They may not know it, they may not realize it, but we need to be praying for all people. And this is what Paul is charging us and charging Timothy to do. So you pray for everyone. It pleases the Lord. So we go on to the second verse. It says, For kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Now this, this may be where it gets tough. See, the first time I had read this, I was kind of confused. I don't know why I was confused at the time when I read it. But Paul has this great, you should make, requests, prayers, intercession, thanksgiving for all people. And then he says, also, you know, pray for kings and all those in authority. I'm like, well, that, that doesn't matter, does it? Well, in fact realizing it later, it's one of the most important things that we need to pray for, especially in the time we're living in. 
After the election two weeks ago, it has been nonstop conflict. The day after, uh, the day after the election, I get on Facebook. Either people are praising that Trump was elected or attacking him and attacking every single person on their Facebook page that said so. So much division, so much hatred coming at something that, in all honesty, we can control some of it, but we have to know that God is ultimately in control of this situation. We need to be praying for all those in authority. That just doesn't mean the President of the United States. For all those people who have been elected recently, for the governors, the senators, our mayors, and even our bosses at work, those people who have authority over us, they have a form of power over us. They do control our paycheck. paycheck. They do sign it. They make decisions that can affect us later on in our career. So Paul is not only urging Timothy to pray for all people, but specifically the people that are over him, people who have control in the world. Because God has given them a gift that they may not realize. They have a lot of power in their hands. Some waste it, some use it for good. But we need to constantly be praying for our nation. Praying for all of our political leaders that they make the right decisions. It says that we may live in peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Yeah, that sounds uh, a bit far in the time that we're living in. Especially as we know, as the end of time comes, it's going to be less peaceful. There's not going to be as much um, peace for us in the world, because we are against the world. But for as long as we can, we need to pray that we can have peace and quietness in our lives. Even if it's just small, we need to keep praying for this peace. This is something as Christians that we need to do. Not only should we be praying for everyone, but specifically, we need to be praying for kings and all those in authority so that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So pray for everyone. It pleases the Lord. We move on to our third verse. This is good and pleases God our Savior. See, prayer is pleasing in God's sight. Some versions don't include what the Greek word here translated is, to be before or in the sight of. If you think about back in the time of creation, at the end of every day, it always said, and God saw that it was good. It was good in his eyes. That is something that pleased him. It was what was so important to him that everything was good in his sight. When we pray, this is good and pleasing to God. When we pray for everyone, making requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving for people, when we pray for our authority figures, this is pleasing to God. He loves watching us pray. It is a beautiful sight to him. So imagine yourself the most beautiful place you've ever been. This is uh, Moraine Lake in Alberta, Canada. I have, a few, uh, I have a few friends here from Alberta today, which is awesome. Uh, I'm not actually from Alberta. My grandparents live there. But every time I go up there, this is the lake I go to because this is the place where I see God the most. I see the beauty. I see this blue lake that's almost as blue as the sky. I see the mountains all around and show how magnificent my God is. I get to climb which gives me the opportunity to thank God for the body that he's blessed me with. See, when I see this, I see God's beauty. It is pleasing in my eyes. And in the same way, in whatever place that you're thinking of right now, that's the way God looks at us when we pray. He looks at us and says, that is so amazing that you're praying for all people, even your enemies you're praying for. You're praying for the political leaders that you may not even agree with, but you're still praying for them. 
that is good and pleasing in God's eyes. Pray for everyone. It is pleasing to God in His sight. We get to our final verse, talking about who God is and what His meaning for prayer is. Who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. The first part of this verse, God wants all people to be saved. It doesn't matter your political ideology. It doesn't matter if you're a liberal or conservative. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter what country you live in. God wants every single person in humanity to be saved. All of mankind. That's what the Greek word defines it at. All of mankind. He wants to be saved. There is no person in this world that God doesn't want to see in his kingdom. The sad thing is he knows that it probably won't happen. He's not going to see all of mankind in his kingdom. Even so, he still wants every single person to be saved. He doesn't show favoritism to any group. Even though we as humans like to have favorites, we like to choose sides. And in choosing sides, yes, there's conflict. Yes, there's the vision. But the thing about prayer, prayer unites us. Prayer brings us together because that's when we're realizing that there's something more to this world than just the world that we live in. There is something greater. We all want a part in this kingdom. We all want to be in God's kingdom. So this is one of the reasons why we should be praying for everyone. This is why it is pleasing to God. Why praying for everyone is pleasing in his sight because we're praying for the salvation of others. We're praying that everyone gets to know who Jesus is. And on that note, it says, and come to a knowledge of the truth. Now you may ask, what is this truth? The same word used in the Greek here can be found in John 1.14. John 1.14 is very famous in saying that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the Son came into the world, the only begotten Son of God, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Almost same language here. Grace and truth. See, Jesus is the truth. This is what God wants everyone to know. They want God, that God wants us to know Jesus. He wants the entire world to know about Jesus. And when you want to know Jesus, you get into his word, for he is the word. You get to learn more about him, learn more about his teachings, this truth that God has blessed us with. And in America, we're definitely privileged because we can read this openly. We have this truth that God has given us. When it comes to the Hacksaw Ridge movie, the truth is just going out to the people now. The gospel message is going to all people. We don't even have to do that much work, but it's time that we take advantage of it. That we take advantage of the truth that was was portrayed in that movie. But God wants all of us to know the truth. He wants all of humanity to know the truth, that they are loved, that they are cared for, and that Jesus died on the cross for them. So I urge you, To pray for everyone, it pleases the Lord. Over the next year, I would pray for my campers every single day. Yes, like that one week, I did miss a couple days. Um, But I did whatever I could to pray to God for them. The reason in my prayers is because I wanted them to know someone cared, someone loved them. And ultimately, I wanted to see them saved. These are three of my groups. These are all from my, uh, my past summer. Uh, past summer in 2015, not 2016. I don't have a picture, unfortunately, of my first group that had signed my staff. But this is a picture of the one that I do have of the three groups. Give me a second. 
And this is it. This is the staff that God blessed me with, in which I have the names of over 30 different kids on it. It's not just kids from camp. Before this, I was at uh, Dalton, Georgia, and I was in charge of the youth group there. And on my last day there, I asked them if they would sign this, because I want to pray for them every single day, as long as I could. Because I may never see them again. I hope I will. And if I get to see them, I want to see them in heaven. I can tell you, after praying for these kids, whether it was just my prayers or everyone else's prayers who had been praying for them, I can confirm that there have been three confirmed baptisms from it. And another one is on the way, hopefully this summer. I can't thank God enough for prayer. I can't thank God enough for allowing me to pray for these kids because I love them so much. I love working with them. I love just being around them. I love praying for them because they're in need of Jesus. And all of humanity is in need of Jesus right now. The task is daunting. Thinking about praying for everyone. It's a tough task. But it always starts with the people that you know. I know there has to be someone in your life, maybe you yourself, who doesn't know who Jesus is. Who doesn't have a relationship with Jesus. Who doesn't choose to follow Jesus. Pray for that person. Pray for yourself. Timothy knew Hymenaeus and Alexander. These were good friends of him, but they had fallen away. I can't think of how much that hurt him, to know that two brothers that he had studied with had fallen away from the truth. See, Jesus is praying for you and me today. He's constantly in prayer. He's praying to the Father, asking Lord, I want to see all people possible saved. And we come to him as his prayer warriors. We pray for individuals in our lives. We make requests for them. We make prayers towards them. We intercede for them. We praise God for them. We pray for all our kings, our presidents, all our elected officials, and we want them to see Jesus. That is the ultimate goal, friends, to have them see Jesus. We want everyone in this world to see Jesus, for it is good and pleasing in his sight. So that is my challenge for you today. As Jesus is praying for the salvation of us all, may you do the same and pray for the salvation of this world. Let's pray. Most wonderful and gracious Father, Lord, we thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to pray, the blessing to pray, Lord, to pray for our friends, our neighbors, our family, even our government officials, Lord. We have the opportunity to come before you and pray for their salvation. And Lord, that is, that is the ultimate goal. Lord, as I've prayed for my campers for the past two years, I want to see them in heaven. I want to see them there, Lord. I'm so happy for the decisions that I've made, but I'm still longing for more decisions to be made. And I know my friends here have someone in their life who they're longing to, be, to see saved. Whether it's their grandchildren, their kids, their spouses, Lord, their brothers or sisters, maybe even an acquaintance that they've met. Jesus, as we come before you on our knees, may we remember that you love it when we pray. For we are praying for the salvation 
of this world. Jesus, we thank you so much for this opportunity to pray unto you. And may we leave this place knowing that you are with us. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Dear Lord, it was good to be here this morning. I pray that each of us will pray that, that those words, give me Jesus. And as we face this week ahead, as we sit around the Thanksgiving table, let us pray to you for the things that we need in our lives. When we need rain, let us pray. When we're disquieted by the political situation, let us pray. When we're faced with the unknowable, let us pray. And when we're burdened for people in our lives, let us pray. Oh Lord, let us pray, amen. <laughs> 